Interest rates fell back below 7% this week, but just barely. And just like every other time rates got up near 7%, home buyers hit the pause button in hopes of a better rate. But is that the right move? And what does that mean for the Dallas real estate market? My name is Michael. I'm a real estate agent here in the Dallas area. And every Monday, I give you a weekly update covering all of Dallas and Collin County. We're looking for trends, which cities and zip codes are the hottest this week if you may be looking to sell your home, as well as which cities and zip codes are the coolest this week if you're a buyer or investor looking for an opportunity. We'll also be tracking mortgage rates as well as mortgage purchases purchase applications as that's our best leading indicator of what demand is going to look like 30 to 90 days from now. We're looking at things like median list price, days on market, how many homes are having price decreases, and inventory. And if you stick around until the end, I actually do a top 10 rank of both the hottest and coolest cities and zip codes. And this is actually my favorite part, so you don't want to miss it. If any of this sounds like something you're into, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you're looking to make a move in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. I've helped every one of these yellow dots find their little piece of Texas, and I'd love to help you too. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. All that info is in the description below. Okay, today is June 5th. I've got a fresh haircut. So let's see what the data is telling us today. And if this is an old video, you can click the playlist somewhere around here and hopefully it will take you to the most current weekly update. Okay, first up, let's do some market news. Okay, we're looking at the May jobs report here and you can see job growth surprised economists yet again in May with total non-farm payroll employment rising by 339,000 jobs compared to April. This increase is in line with the average monthly gain of 341,000 jobs over the past 12 months. However, as more people entered the workforce in May, the unemployment ticked up to 3.7% compared to 3.4% in April, with the total number of unemployed persons rising to 6.1 million. The unemployment rate has remained between 3.4 and 3.7% since March 2022. While these things may sound great for you and me as an individual, because we always want to have jobs and we want to have low unemployment, but what it communicates to the Fed is that the economy is still too strong, even with interest rates way up here, which tells them there's no need to drop interest rates anytime soon because the rest of the economy outside of housing is moving along just fine with these high rates. Additionally, the Wall Street Journal had reported on Thursday that it was likely the Fed would be announcing that it was pausing rate hikes in its June meeting. That, of course, was before the jobs data came out. But remember, the Fed's main priority is to bring down inflation. If the Fed perceives the economy is still too hot, it certainly could continue raising rates or at the very least keep them where they are for much longer. So I will just say it again, neither you nor I nor even the Fed knows what's going to happen next with rates at this point. So please don't sit on the sidelines thinking rates have to come down from here. They don't. And in fact, they can still go up. So if you can afford to buy a house today, then buy a house today. If rates do drop, you just refinance. And if you're still on the fence about whether or not it's a good time to buy now, please watch this video. Okay, moving on, let's take a look at interest rates. We started last week at a 7.12, peaked up to 7.14, dropped all the way to 6.85, and ended the week at 6.9, and that's where we'll be beginning this week. So right now, we are down 0.24% from that 7.14 last week. So how big of a deal is this? Well, on a 400K home, from the peak of last week to today, your monthly payment would be $61 a month lower this week. So that's $732 a year. That's how big of a deal every little mortgage rate move is. But the bigger story in mortgages this week is the purchase application data. As expected, ever since rates took off going straight up again, we've been seeing less people apply for mortgages every week. This is how it's been all year. Interest rates go above 6.5%, closer to 7, people stop applying for mortgages. If interest rates go below 6.5%, people start applying for mortgages. That's why we've been calling 6.5% our line in the sand. But what's remarkable to me is that earlier in the year when rates got up near 7%, we were seeing weekly declines as high as 10% in people applying for mortgages. So from one week to the next, there would basically be a 10% drop in demand, which is huge. This time, however, for the last three weeks, with rates going all the way up over 7% again, we've only seen an average weekly decline of 3.9%. So earlier in the year, if this happened, we would have seen a 10% decline. Now we're only seeing a 3.9% decline, and that's average over three weeks. So even with rates going over 7%, it's having a smaller and smaller impact on the number of people it's deterring from applying for a mortgage. This again is just more evidence pointing to the fact that buyers are getting more used to and more comfortable with these higher rates. Okay, let's move on to housing data. We always start by taking a look at Dallas County as a whole. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know that what we use here is the market action index. This just takes all of this data on the side and puts it to one easy graphic with one easy to read number so we can quickly see what's going on in the market. And you can see immediately from last month to this month, nothing has changed. The market has completely stalled. And you can see that reflected here, 50, almost 57, 57, barely over 57, 57.01, 56.6. So all of these weeks, the market has basically just been stalled. You can see a lot of these are flat. Median list price is pretty flat. 
Median days on market has been at 28 for a long time, for months now. The number of homes having price decreases, again, no real change. The market is just completely stalled out. Now, the one number I was getting excited about was this inventory looks like it's shooting straight up, but if you look, this data only goes back to February 17th. So if we actually go down and look at inventory and we turn off the 90 day, that whole thing we're looking at where it looks like it's going straight up and very exciting is actually just represented in this line, which is basically just flat. So not actually exciting. And when you look at these charts, every one of these dots is a one year period. So you can see we're up from a year ago where we were at 1799, now we're 2478. And then a year before that, we were only at 1621. But really there's nothing to get excited about in inventory until we're at least above this 4242 where we were of June in 2020. And really we need to be more up around here in the 5,000s to have a normal market. So the good news is inventory is not dropping, but the bad news is it should be climbing with rates where they are and demand where it is. So there's just not enough sellers for inventory to go up yet, which also means if rates come down at all, if they ever get below 6%, inventory is gonna go straight down and we're gonna have a huge problem. So at least for buyers, it actually is to your benefit for rates to stay this high because it's the only chance we have at inventory stacking up. Okay, let's take a look at Collin County. As we can see here, the exact same. It is totally stalled out. I mean, this has been about 52 for a while. Median list price is not moving. Days on market is not moving. Flat at 28. Price decreases, no significant change there. Inventory looks to be climbing, but we'll zoom in again to see how it really looks. Let's look at the 90 day. And at least here, I mean, it definitely looks to be forming a bottom on the 90 day. If we look at the seven day, it's starting to curve up. So hopefully that trend continues. But again, nothing really to get excited about until we're at least back to where we were in 2020. We've got to get above that 3,600 and really more towards the 5,200 if we're going to have a normal market again. So if you want to be set up on a search like this, you can see all of this data for yourself. Just shoot me a text with your email, your name, and where you want to be set up on. And I'll also say, if you text me saying, I want to be set up on Dallas County and Collin County, that information is not going to be helpful to you. So if you text me both of those, I'm going to call you and say, how can we narrow this down so that we can get you the info that's helpful to you? For example, if I set you up on all of Collin County, that's not going to be very helpful if you're looking in Plano because it's giving you the data from Frisco and Prosper and McKinney. So let's figure out where you actually want to be and let's get you the best data. Okay, let's move on to our top 10 ranked charts. This is my favorite part of the video. This is looking at the top 10 hottest and coolest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and all of Collin County. So starting with the absolute hottest cities in all of Dallas and Collin County, number one is Grapevine. Number two, Carrollton heats up one and takes out Louisville. So Carrollton and Louisville switch places. Plano remains. Saxe actually moves up three spots, and you can see by that little tick straight up, Saxe is heating up. Balch Springs is actually the huge surprise. It comes on out of nowhere all the way to the number six spot, and you can see that line is just going straight up. Allen remains. Duncanville as well comes on the list out of nowhere all the way to the number eight spot. You can see their line is going straight up. Coppell remains, and DeSoto knocks off Richardson for the number 10 spot. So these are the 10 hottest cities in Dallas and Collin County. If you are a seller here, you're gonna get top dollar. Now we like to zoom in on the specific zip codes. And these are the hottest zip codes out of all 84 zip codes in Dallas County and 26 zip codes in Collin County. So if you make this list, then you are in a red hot zip code. So starting out at number one is Plano 75023, Carrollton 75007, Plano 75025, Grapevine 76051, Irving 75063, Allen 75013, Plano 75075, Grapevine 75052, Garland 75044 and Louisville 75067. So again, if you made this list, congratulations, you can get top dollar. Now, if you're a buyer looking in here, I'm sorry. Okay, moving on to the same thing, but the coolest list. Now, as far as the market action index is concerned, anything below a 30 is a buyer's market and above a 30 is a seller's market. So even though these are the coolest markets and they're getting close to a buyer's market, they are still seller's markets. So the absolute coolest city in these counties is Farmersville, followed by Ferris. Leonard cools off three spots and you can see, look at that chart, Leonard is just dying off. Van Alstine heats up one by basically staying where it is. Blue Ridge heats up one and White Wright is getting absolutely wrecked. This was nowhere to be found on the list last week and it comes on all the way to the number six spot. Look how fast this place is cooling off. Demand here is falling off a cliff. Prosper heats up two spots. Royce City remains. Seagaville heats up two spots and Rockwall heats up one spot to make the hottest of the top 10 coolest list. 
Now zooming into zip codes, none of these zip codes again are a buyer's market yet, but the first nine are at least under a 40. So this is as cool as you're gonna get zip code wise. Farmersville, 75442, Dallas, 75212, Dallas, 75219, Ferris, 75125, Leonard, 75452, Dallas, 75235, Dallas, 75203, Dallas, 75209, Van Alstine, 75495, Blue Ridge, 75424. So if you are a buyer looking for an opportunity, these are the spots where you are least likely to get into a multiple offer situation and maybe find a deal. Okay, moving on to inventory. This is the weekly and this is the 90 day average. So let's start with the 90 day. Again, we're wanting to see where is inventory going up because that's good for us as buyers. Do we see anything curving up? Not here, not here. I mean, Frisco is starting to curve up, but it went down so hard. I don't even know if that's really helping. Royce City, we came up real high and we're starting to curve up again, so that's good. Rockwall's got a nice curve up. Plano, curving up, but again, that's after coming down real hard. Garland, starting to flatten out. So not a ton of hope here on the 90 day, but if we look at the weekly, we can see a nice curve on Frisco, on Plano, on Rockwall, and on Allen. So all we're trying to do here is say, What's inventory going to look like? Am I ever going to have more houses to choose from or is it multiple offers forever? So the curving up, that's what we want. So what do you guys think? What's the market going to look like this spring? Are rates going to stay where they are? Will they ever drop or are they going to go up? And remember, if you're looking to buy or sell in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. All that is in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.